What's up Broncos fans? I am back here again to do another video. It's It's been a couple months since I've made a video and I, I felt today was a, a really good time to come back and kind of a, address the state of the franchise, if you will, with the Broncos and, and touch on what, what happened with the team in 2018 and, and where we're headed in, in, in the offseason this year, going into a new year and, and obviously after a very disappointing 6-10 and 10 season. And I'm sure many of you heard the news by now that, that dropped this morning with us firing Vance Joseph as our head coach after two seasons as our head coach. So again, it just was kind of a perfect storm, I think, to come back and make a video and talk about Vance Joseph being fired now. Uh, an, another coaching casualty for for the Broncos under John Elway's tenure. It seems this has happened pretty much every other year uh, under John Elway's watch as, as the president of football operations of this, this franchise and of this team. So it, it just felt like a good time to, to come back and, and kind of touch on that and, and just kind of give my opinion on what happened to the Broncos in 2018 and where they're headed in 2019 with, with our season now being over. Our, you know, our, our first back-to-back -back losing season since the early 70s. So it's obviously been a, a disappointing run for the Broncos, not only the past two years, but I'd say since Super Bowl 50, um, this team has kind of been in, in disarray, if you will. But definitely the last two years have been tough with Fans Joseph as our head coach going 11 and 21 under his, his watch as the head coach. And, uh, you know, I, I definitely think this, this move and this decision came at no surprise to anyone, but you know everyone was obviously, I think, real disappointed with this year, but I think anyone that really knew this team and really kind of saw the writing on the wall, if you will, going into 2018, expected this kind of a season from th this group in 2018 from this Broncos team. I, I was not shocked at all that we went 6-10. and 10. If you go back on my channel and watch videos that I made months ago leading up to this season and when I had my friend Brian here on this channel and, and even his opinion on the team and kind of kind of where they were going in 2018, I think anyone that really knows this team wasn't surprised at all with how 2018 went and, and with us finishing 6-10. and 10. I, know, I know John Elway likes to constantly sell the fact that we're always competing for Super Bowls and, and competing for championships and this fan base always likes to think we're in the championship hunt and we're always supposed to be you know in that 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 battle for the Lombardi trophy but the reality is again if you really paid attention to the way this team was built definitely post Super Bowl 50 I think everyone kind of saw this coming and you know Vance Joseph I think definitely is to blame and and obviously he wasn't I think the best head coach in the world going 11 and 21 as I mentioned as our head coach the past two seasons um, you know, I, I definitely think he, he, he failed to do his job for sure, but as I, I mentioned in my last video I made two months ago, you can see it in the title, I think John Elway deserves more blame than Vance Joseph and, and as much blame as, as anyone for kind of where the Broncos are at right now and definitely for us going 6-10 and 10 this year because his moves and his decision decisions, especially from a personnel standpoint, put us in this situation. I, I don't think it really mattered who our coach was the, the last two seasons. I, I don't think they were going to be successful. So I know a lot of people are, are excited to, to have Vance Joseph fired and a lot of Broncos fans think that getting rid of him is, is going to be the, the, the save all of all our problems, so to say. But I don't think that's the case at all. Again, I once again, I, I keep saying this, but when me and my friend Brian were making our, our, our podcast here on this channel, opinionated a couple uh, months back, we both mentioned that this team is much closer to a rebuild than it is a reboot. And, and that, that was a word that kept getting thrown out by, by Vance Joseph and John Elway and the players that, oh, you know, we're not rebuilding, we're rebooting. But, but the, the, the straight facts of the situation is, is we are in rebuilding mode and we have been in rebuilding mode since we lost Peyton Manning specifically and, and since we, we won Super Bowl 50. We have not replenished the well, so to say, with, with talent and we have not filled in the areas that we needed to to improve our team and, and keep the longevity of our team in terms of competing for titles and, and, and competing for the AFC West Division title. We've definitely kind of fell behind and, and the NFL has evolved why we have kind of just stayed pat. And again, I, I think the main person to blame for that is John Elway and I am utterly baffled that the media and fans alike aren't putting more blame on him. Again, you can talk about Vance Joseph and, and his subpar coaching ability and his subpar decision making at times in games and this, that or the other and criticize him to, to your blue in the face and I totally understand that again to, to be the coach that that is the first coach we've had since the early 1970s to have back to back losing seasons that's obviously not a great thing and that's not acceptable and, and I think again to, to a, an extent 
he obviously deserves some blame and, and he failed to do his job. But you, you look at the way the players talk about him, I don't think this was necessarily a problem with, with Vance Joseph as a, a man or as a leader. I think the team responded well to him and his message and his coaching. I think this was a, to be quite honest, a, a, a personnel problem. And this was a talent problem. And that solely falls on the guy making those decisions. And that's John Elway. Uh, to be honest with you, Today, I think the guy that should be getting fired is John Elway. And obviously that's not going to happen because of not only his standing in, in the franchise and his history as a player uh, in this franchise and, and, and in the city. No one seems to ever want to call him out on his shit. But the reality is, is he is to blame for where the Broncos are at. He is to blame for why the Broncos have gone 11-21 and 21 the past two seasons. Vance Joseph sure deserves some of it. But a majority of that blame and a majority of your disappointment or your hatred or your criticism should not be aimed at Vance Joseph. Sure, some of it should, but most of it should be aimed at John Elway. And, and I hope people can kind of realize that now with the season that we had. Again, as I mentioned, most people that, that saw the writing on the wall, they saw this coming. And, and you know, with, with I, I've mentioned it time and time again with John Elway's draft history, with some of the decisions he's made in free agency, with some of the, the, the decisions he made with not re-signing players, such as Malik Jackson, that's a, that's a big one that comes to mind, or Danny Trevathan. He paid for all those things. So... And, and drafting guys like Pat Paxton Lynch and Chad Kelly and thinking those were the long-term solutions at quarterback. Another decision that Elway made that got us in this position that we are in now starts with hiring Vance Joseph in the first place over someone like Kyle Shanahan. If he would have just hired Kyle Shanahan instead of Vance Joseph, I think Kyle Shanahan was was more so what our team needed, especially from an offensive standpoint. So that also falls on John Elway. And I don't know why Elway continuously gets a pass from, from mainly the fan base, but also the media and the franchise in general for these decisions. Again, post-Super Bowl 50, he really has, has put us in, in the situation, and it's a multitude of things. And, and his draft history speaks for itself. I've already gone to that extensively, so I'm not going to rehash that here in this video. But John Elway has been terrible in the draft, and it's it's very well documented. You can do the research yourself. You can go watch my past videos where I discuss it extensively. Again, those decisions have led us here. So while I understand Vance Joseph being fired, while I'm, I'm not against the move at all, and, and why I think it was the right move ultimately, because I think we need a more offensive-minded coach, and with all due respect to Vance Joseph, the man and, and football coach, I, I don't think he was the right guy for this team right now. I think we, we need a, a different kind of coach from a schematic standpoint, but also from a personality standpoint. But I tell you what, I will back Vance Joseph in the sense that if you're going to put all the blame on him for the Broncos' struggles over the last two seasons and just act like John Elway wasn't you know, responsible for any of this, um, I think you're fooling yourself and I think you're just delusional and you're, you're, you're holding John Elway in too high a regard because of you know what he did with helping build the team to win Super Bowl 50 and what he did as a player, obviously, throughout multiple uh, years and, and, and uh, you know over a decade of, of excellence at the quarterback position for this franchise. Um, I, I think your, 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 your viewpoint on it is, is kind of, I guess, clouded by those things. So um, again, I, I think it was the right move to, to move on from Vance Joseph and truly I, I hope he, him and his family the best. I hope he finds another job. I hope he gets another opportunity and I'm sure one day maybe he will get another opportunity to be a head coach but just right now he wasn't the guy I think we needed, but again, I, I think people need to direct some of their anger and some of their criticism and some of their frustrations toward the guy who really is responsible for all this, and that is John Elway, and you got to stop giving him a hall pass. I mean, just look at our team in general. I think the defense, if you, if you want to just break down our team from an offensive and defensive standpoint, our defense obviously had some struggles this year, but I think there is, there's, there's talent and there's youth on the defense to at least show some promise. You got guys like Justin Simmons, you got a guy like Will Parks who I think showed out this year when he got an opportunity to start and I think that that duo at safety can be very dangerous for years to come. You obviously have the, the, the duo of Von Miller and Bradley Chubb, you still have guys like Chris Harris Jr. and Derek Wolf and Todd Davis, you got a young nice linebacker and Josie Jewell. I mean there's things to work with defensively but there's still also a lot of holes that again were kind of created by John Elway's decisions from a personnel standpoint. You don't have an interior pass rusher. You got great guys on the edge and Chubb and Von Miller, but there's really no defensive tackle or nose tackle, so to say, to fill the middle and not only help you stop the run, but again get kind of an interior pass rushing presence to push that pocket 
um, and, and kind of take some of the pressure off guys like Von Miller and Bradley Chubb to do everything. You haven't really addressed that. Um, you don't have a true number one defensive back as much as I li like Bradley Roby and, and been a fan of him. He's not a number one corner. I love Chris Harris Jr. He's not a number one corner. Isaac Yadam is, is a, a good young corner. He's not a number one corner. So you don't have that true lockdown guy in, in your secondary at that defensive back position. And then as good as Todd Davis is, and you know, as, as good as Brandon Marshall has been in the past, obviously a guy recently with some, some things off the field and, and injury problems has, has kind of limited him. You still don't have a linebacker that can, that can cover anyone. And, and that, again, stems from getting rid of Danny Trevathan years ago and, and not resigning him and letting him go to Chicago. And look at now what Chicago's defense has become with him in the middle there. Obviously, they have a ton of talent around him, but still, losing a piece like that, you haven't done anything to fill that. So defensively, there's at least some promise there. But again, due to some personnel decisions that John Elway has made, um, th there's obviously some big holes to fill, especially in terms of that number one defensive back spot. You've got to find a true number one lockdown corner, and you got to find an interior pass rushing presence, whether it be in the draft or whether it be in free agency. You have to address that. So um, again, those th that's John Elway's doing. And the offense is, is just... Uh, entire mess outside of Philip Lindsay the whole offense is just extremely bleak and it, you know there, there's not a whole lot of talent on that side of the football and again that is solely on John Elway and the decisions he made obviously Philip Lindsay was great and, and getting him as, at a, as an undrafted free agent the hometown kid out of CU like anyone that watched him in college knew about his talent and, and expected him to be at least somewhat of a productive player at this level, let alone what he did in, in his rookie year, rushing for 1,037 yards, averaging 5.4 yards per carry, and, and finishing with nine touchdowns behind an atrocious offensive line, no less. And he, he was also effective in the passing game, 35 catches, 241 yards, even when our offensive coordinator, Bill Musgrave, chose not to really put him in those positions to showcase his receiving ability and get him out into space where he can really be dynamic. But outside of Phillip Lindsay, your offense is a, is, is a mess, and that solely comes down to the decisions John Elway has made from a personal standpoint. The QB situation, again, ever since Peyton Manning left after Super Bowl 50, has been absolutely dreadful. And to sign a guy like Case Keenum to $36 million and think he's the answer at quarterback, even if it was a short-term fix, whatever, to kind of put that Band-Aid over a really long-term problem, again, that is just utter stupidity in my eyes. And again, that falls on John Elway to give a guy $36 million for two years, $18 million a season, and this season he throws 18 touchdowns and 15 interceptions. That guy is not the answer at quarterback. Case Keenum, we need to move on from him. And I like Case Keenum as a guy. I like him as a person. He's not a talented quarterback, and he's not talented enough to make up for for the lack of talent you have in other areas offensively, and even, as I me just mentioned, in some cases defensively. So that's obviously a huge issue. The offensive line is still a mess, and it's, it's something you, you didn't address when you had the opportunity to get a guy like Quentin Nelson. Again, as great as Bradley Chubb is, this is not an indictment on Bradley Chubb, but our team needed a, a presence on the offensive front and needed kind of a, a, a change not only in talent, but demeanor from an offensive line standpoint. And you had a you had the guy staring you right in, in your face in Quentin Nelson and you passed on him. So now our, our, our offensive line is still a mess. Garrett Bowles has been nothing but a bust. We're, you know, wasting a first round pick on him back in twenty seventeen. Again, another Elway decision was a huge mistake. And you've you've done nothing there to solidify that offensive line at all. That whole offensive line, you could argue, needs to be revamped. So that's obviously a huge problem. Again, that falls on Elway and a lot of his decisions, especially from a drafting standpoint. And now we have even more issues offensively when you look at the receiver position. You know, it was a huge question mark. You, you trade DT, which was understandable given, I guess, the contract situation, but you get rid of him, and then Emmanuel Sanders tears his Achilles, and you're left with two rookies in Cortland Sutton and Deshaun Hamilton. And then Tim Patrick, who I think Tim Patrick's got a bright future, and, and, and like Philip Lindsay, turned out to be kind of a, a nice diamond in the rough, so to say, or, or a nice uh, sleeper that, that you found. But at the end, I don't think any of those guys are, are true number one receivers right now. I think the only guy that has the potential to out of those three to be a number one wide receiver is Cortland Sutton. And to be honest, I don't think he's ever going to be a number one wide out. I think at best he'd be a really good number two with great size that can block. Um, and, and obviously do some things from a red zone standpoint and down the field being a big target for your quarterback. So now you have huge 
questions at the receiver standpoint. Again, especially with Emmanuel Sanders' long-term health, him tearing his Achilles, that's an injury that a lot of people are, are never the same again after. So now not only do you have the huge problem at quarterback they've had for years, obviously since Peyton Manning left, that you failed to address, the offensive line, which has been atrocious now for the past, what, three, four years, even going back further than that. Now you have a huge question mark at wide receiver, and you're going to have to address that in the draft of free agency, and you're going to have to hit on that, which John Elway hitting in the draft at this point is is, is like Stevie Wonder hitting a grand slam. You know what I mean? It's it's just it's, it's something that's it's very rarely going to happen. And then the other big issue offensively that you have failed to address for I don't even know how long at this point, is the tight end position. We've had multiple times to get young tight ends, whether it was Evan Ingram in the past, whether it was David Njoku in the past, in the draft, and you've missed time and time again or failed to even acknowledge that as a problem. You know, I have a lot of respect for, for Matt Lacoste and Jake Budd and, and Jeff Hoerman. None of them are the answer at, at tight end. Jeff Hoerman and Matt Lacoste barely produce when they even get playing time, and Jake Budd, obviously, unfortunately, has really poor luck with injuries and has a very, you know, tainted career now because of injuries. So you still have this glaring hole at tight end when you're seeing a league where the tight end position is, is an ever-evolving weapon to utilize in the offense. I mean, look at Kansas City with Travis Kelsey. Look at Philadelphia with Zach Ertz. Look at the Giants with Evan Ingram. Again, a guy that, you know, struggled with, with injuries, but this year in the second half of, of the season really came on strong. Look at Tampa Bay with what they did this year with O.J. Howard and Cameron Brait. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So the fact that you've kind of just acted like the tight end position has no value and you don't need to address that again, that falls on John Elway and his line of thinking in terms of, of you know, team building and his personnel decisions that he's made mainly post Super Bowl 50, but even before that and putting our team in this situation. I don't care if Vince Lombardi was our coach or Tom Landry or any of the, the Hall of Fame coaches, Bill Belichick even, if he was our coach with the roster that we have had over the past couple of seasons, especially the last two years, you know, we didn't do much to help Vance Joseph. So, you know, I, I think a lot of that is, is, is directed towards John Elway and the job he's done as a general manager or president of football operations, whatever the, the hell his title is at this moment. And again, I know he was a great player here and I know we won Super Bowl 50 under his watch. But at a, at a certain point, sports and, and just this, this industry, this business, this league in general, and a lot of things in life in general, come down to what have you done for me lately. And you have to look at what John Elway has done. Not only his whole track record, which is very, very suspect as a, a president of football operations GM, but what he's done recently, specifically with the personnel decisions, I think he really got to start throwing some shade his way and throwing some criticism and your frustrations his way. And at the same time, I think as a fan base, we need to have more awareness. The Broncos fans, again, you guys expect this team to always be in the hunt for Super Bowls, always compete, no matter who's our quarterback, no matter what flaws we have in our roster, no matter who our coach is, no matter the dumb decisions John Elway makes from a personnel standpoint, you guys always expect us just to just find a way to, to, to compete for a Super Bowl, and we should be competing for a Super Bowl every year. That's not how things work. You have to build a team to, to get to that point, and you have to have the right pieces in place from top to bottom to get to that point. We don't have really any pieces at all, if, if very limited ones. Um, and, and this goes back to even this season when we, when we were three and six, and then we went on that winning streak. We beat the Chargers in a close game. We beat Pittsburgh in a, in a close game, and we were six and six. All the fans here are like, oh, here we go. We're, we're, we're going to make a push for the playoffs. That's on you as a fan base for, for not having self-awareness to go, okay, we got some good wins over the Chargers in Pittsburgh, but we're still a ways away because what happened after we went you know, went on that win streak to get to 500? We lost the four, uh, last four games of the season to finish 6-10 and 10 and finish with a top-10 draft pick because that's what our team was from a talent perspective going into the, the season. So I think as a fan base, you guys got to really start to be more self-aware and I think every fan is guilty of this, including myself at times, but you need to really start having realistic expectations and really look at this team closely and, and, and really stop 
again, giving guys like John Elway a pass and, and just acting like we're a Super Bowl contender. I mean, all year I had to hear about, man, we, we, we competed with the, the Chiefs twice and we had a close loss to the Texans and we had a close game against the Rams. We're right there. We're so close to being a contender. No, we're not. At the end of the day, you are what you are and you are your record. You are a 6-10 and 10 football team. You are 11-21 and 21 team in the past two seasons. I mean, we're also the same team this season that got blown out by the, the sorry New York Jets and got blown out by the Raiders on, on Monday night um, to, to, towards the end of the season, obviously a couple weeks ago, and lost to the fucking San Francisco 49ers in pretty dominant fashion. I mean, people need to start in this fan base having awareness. And again, stop blaming the coach. It's not always the coach's fault. I mean, again, we're about to hire our fourth head coach in six seasons. At a certain point, when are you going to see the fucking writing on the wall when it's right in front of your face? that this is a John Elway problem and this is a personnel problem. So that's just kind of my opinion on, on the Broncos right now and with Vance Joseph being fired and, and kind of why we're in the position we are in. Again, I, I, I put blame on Vance Joseph, but I think a lot of it needs to go towards John Elway. And I think people need to stop giving him a pass because of his, his history as a player and because of the way he's viewed in this city as a god. we got to stop that. And you kind of just got to say, Say what it is. Tell the truth. You got some Broncos fans out there for some reason want us to hire Mike Shanahan again. That's what I'm talking about with the fan base being more aware and, and being more realistic. You guys want Mike Shanahan back as our head coach when the guy is 66 years old and his last head coaching stint with the Washington Redskins went 24-40 and 40 and ruined Robert Griffin III's career pretty much. And before that, his last three seasons as, as the Broncos head coach, he was 500. I think he went 24 and 24 in his last three seasons. He's not the answer. Again, stop living in 1997 and 1998. Mike Shanahan is not the answer. But even some of these 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 other guys that, that we're going to interview, I mean, one of the, the, the first names I heard was Mike Munchak, who's the Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line coach. Of course, he's the, the former head coach of, of the Tennessee Titans from 2011 to 2013. He went 22-26 and 26 as a head coach with the Titans. Never made the playoffs. Why are we even interviewing him? I don't understand that at all. Then you got guys like Brian Flores, the Patriots defensive coordinator. Vic Vangio, um, the Bears defensive coordinator, uh, was formerly the Niners defensive coordinator when, when they made all those those NFC conference and that Super Bowl run uh, with, with, under uh, Jim Harbaugh. But again, I, I don't think we need a defensive-minded coach. We clearly have the most issues and most holes offensively. I think we were in the bottom 10 this year in terms of points scored. And again, that's that's... That's dreadful. I mean, our defense, you, you can call them out, and, 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 and obviously there's some holes and, and weaknesses that need to be fixed on that side of the football too, but our team has massive, massive issues offensively, and bringing in a, a defensive coordinator like Vic Fangio or Brian Flores or bringing in a guy like Mike Munchak who was a terrible coach in Tennessee, none of those guys get me excited, and the fact, again, well, that's on John Elway for even interviewing these guys. I don't understand what he's thinking. We need an offensive-minded coach, and we need to solve the the quarterback position and the problem there and fill that hole in terms of long-term. You need to get a guy, whether it's in the draft, whether it's via trade, you need to find the long-term solution in 2019 or 2020. It has to happen within the next two years in terms of, of finding that long-term franchise quarterback. And a couple other names thrown out there in terms of potential head coaching candidates for the Broncos. Chuck Pagano, uh, the former Colts head coach, who went 53-43 and 43 from 2012 to 2017 as a head coach for the Colts, went 3-3 three and three in the playoffs. You know, I think Chuck Pagano's a great guy. I'd be a little more warm to that idea of us hiring him than, than any of the three guys I mentioned previously. And then Mike McCarthy, who, of course, got fired by Green Bay this year, uh, went 125 77 and two ties in his 12 years as the Packers head coach from 2006 to 2018 went 10 and 8 in the playoffs obviously won Super Bowl 45 as a head coach of that team but obviously had a lot of help too with a little guy named Aaron Rodgers so um, I, again those two guys I'd be more open to at least interviewing than guys like Mike Munchak and Vic Vangio and Brian Flores and Mike fucking Shanahan which to me is the stupidest thing I've ever heard um, but I think the Broncos really need to start getting some awareness and you know, whether that's someone else coming in to, to make the football decisions or someone just finally just putting John Elway in his place and saying, look, you don't know everything and you're the main reason we're in this position right now. Um, we need an offensive-minded coach. And it, I don't think we need a coach that has had prior coaching experience. You just need someone that really can turn this team around, from, definitely from an offensive standpoint 
And, and then John Elway, with, with, with all due respect, needs to get his head out of his ass and needs to, to lose the ego and, and needs to really start keeping up with the league, keeping up with the times and stop you know, letting his past successes collude his decision making and really like just look for a second, be self-aware, see what you've done as a decision maker and, and the personnel moves you've made and how shitty they are. That needs to be in the forefront of this offseason and that John Elway needs to start evolving with the league or the Broncos are going to continue to be 5-11 and 6-10 and 7-9 and 8-8. And 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 eight and eight. Like we're not going to make the playoffs. We're going to continue to go through coach after coach and people are going to keep blaming the coaches when the fucking problem is John Elway and his decision making. So that's my video guys. That's my opinion on kind of where the Broncos are at right now and, and why their 2018 season went the way it did and, and my opinion on Vance Joseph being fired. I'd, I'd love to hear your guys' comments below. What do you think of Vance Joseph being fired? Do you agree with my assessment that John Elway deserves a lot of this blame? And who are some of the coaches that you'd like to see us maybe interview and give a chance? I'd really love to hear from you guys. Um, you know, again, I, I have a tumultuous relationship with fellow Broncos fans at times because, again, I think a lot of you lack awareness at times, as I, I mentioned throughout this video. But I still love hearing from you guys, and I really respect your opinion. And I'd, I'd really love to hear you guys' input on this one. So thank you for watching, guys. Take care. Have a very safe New Year's Eve tonight. Enjoy it uh, with friends and family. Please, if, if you're seeing this, do not drink and drive. That's just... You can ruin other people's lives by doing that, and not only your own, just please don't drink and drive. If, if you can, take Uber. There's so many so many options out there for, for you to not drink and drive, so please be safe tonight. And uh, one last time, I, I just want to thank Vance Joseph for his two years as a head coach of the Broncos. Again, I, I you know he, he, he ultimately failed, but I think as a person, Vance Joseph is a very, very solid person, and uh, unfortunately for him, he got dealt a really bad hand and, and wasn't able to really do anything with it so good luck to him and his family and, and I'm sure he'll get another chance somewhere down the road with another franchise if not even as early as next season as a coordinator or positions coach he'll, he'll he'll find work so that's it for me guys happy new years looking forward to a good 2019 for the Broncos and, and just for myself in general hopefully you guys will have a, a great night tonight and a great year in 2019 and I'll see you guys next time peace